Time check, it's almost 11 p.m. I finally got Nikki to sleep, joining her brother and mom. So now, I have a bit of me time. Yeah. For the past few days, my kids have been sick, colds and cough, and it's mainly because of the changing weather. It's, it just got cold all of a sudden. And as a result, Nikki has been having a hard time getting to sleep, so I only get to do any work late night at this time. I figured this is a nice time to record my first ever recap. So here we are. I haven't thought of an intro to this yet, so for now, please enjoy this little doodle. Okay, I'm not yet sure how I would like to structure this, but basically Let's Plant Recap does exactly what the title states. It's a recap of the previous video. But since this is the first recap, and I made the announcement about the recap before episode 68, I think. This means that there are two episodes to cover in this pilot episode of Recap. So let's dive right in. Episode 68. Every day, I'm shoveling. Let me pull up the comments. So we've got something here from Jaya F saying, Ha ha ha, shoveling is so familiar. Looks great, especially the black opal and the bittersweet. Love that bit of you and Z sitting backwards on the chairs. He's gonna be a great gardener. Just like his puppy. I really hope so. He likes hanging out with me and just, pull, just playing around where I am. So I hope that when he gets a bit older and I can get him to do stuff, I could either have him do the recording of me or I could film him doing stuff that I would normally do and that's if he wants to do it but that's but that's one of my little dreams for this channel you know getting the little getting little Z man to work on the garden with me next comment is from Linda Leal Another great video. So much info with everyone, especially talking about your planning. Looking at all your plants is like looking in a candy shop. Does everything just automatically grow in Australia? Thanks for including Zach and Nikki. Thanks for your hard work in making these vids for us. First off, thank you so much Linda. Thank you for being a sponsor and sponsoring Charla D. And regarding your question about things automatically growing in Australia? Well, not necessarily. It's just that the plants that I've chosen are adapting really well to the climate. They're perfect for our climate. And in case you didn't know, I'm from Melbourne, down in Australia, and our climate here is equivalent to the USDA Zone 10B, which means that the lowest temperature that we go would be just above or right at the freezing point of water. This means that we don't usually have to worry about snow and at the most, we only have frost. But apart from that, during winter we have lots of rains and it gets very humid in winter. The opposite is true during summer. It can get quite dry and really hot. So all you have to do really is to protect against those extremes. Everything else in the middle, they're just perfect. Next question related from Ruby Cornista and she asks How are your plants with that much rain that you get? Good question and I made a video about this before I think it's a video about growing in the tropics and basically what I do is to make sure that my plants are well mounted and that the, the medium, the growing medium that they have is loose and well draining that way any excess water would not be pooling around the plant and that they would be what's the word they would be flowing away from the plants and the other thing to take note is I've got my plants in the ground and if you do it that way there's a less need to have a gritty medium because the mere fact that the volume of the, the planting area is large that means that water dissipates in all directions unlike if you have them in pots where they are constrained by the pot and you know there's only so much where the water can go before it has to start draining downwards and this explains why 
I can get away with having a not so gritty medium. I just use regular soil and uh, I just use regular soil and some pebbles and uh, concentration. And right now the pebbles make only about one third or one fourth of the mix by volume. That's pretty low actually. If I had to do it in pots though, it would be a different story. I would have to increase the amount of grit, increase the amount of pebbles in the mix. I would go with at least 1 is to 2 or maybe even 1 is to 1 pebbles to soil. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Now you have to adjust it for your climate. Of course, if your climate is more wet than mine, then you would have to make it more minerally, you know, less organic, less less regular soil, more rocks. In him, Penta 7, well, I say Penta 7 because there are seven sevens in the name. Nice Thanksgiving cactus. I have a feeling I've said that before. Yeah, I think you've said it before. Anyway, these plants belong to my mother-in-law and I'll make sure to pass it on to her. Heidi White writes, who needs a gym when you have a garden? Great workout. I definitely agree. Wolfboro Hoops. Thumbs up for mulch and stones. Be sure to stretch Chuck. I was picking up your Aeoniums. They are so pretty. Have a great day. Thank you, Tina. Yeah, uh, I'm happy to report that my, my body, my entire body didn't ache the next day. I guess I was doing proper proper lifting, proper body mechanics. So, yeah, lucky. Cas Nun writes, great video as usual. Sending you love from Southern California. Thank you so much and right back at you. The next two comments are related. Well, at least they're, hint at least they're pointing at the same thing. So the first one is from Kryptonite Whale saying, I spy an Ollie. The other one is from Aneta S saying so much work to do and free workout too. Yeah, I do also notice Oli. He was checking out and probably wondering what the heck? Great job. Your garden always looks beautiful. Yeah, when I was recording that, I actually didn't see Oli in the way because I left my camera just filming and it's on the tripod and while I was cutting out the rocks with my wheelbarrow, I guess Oli was just waiting for me to stop because all of those all of that shoveling as you can imagine is so noisy so I guess he was just waiting for me to, to stop before he came to check out the rocks so yeah by the time I got back he was gone so I never knew and I only realized when I was working on the video and I decided not to cut it out of the video and now we look at this week's video it's episode 69 working on the Patreon Shrine. So if you've seen the video already, you know that I was working on the spot along the fence, And it, but if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend that you do first before continuing here. Let's have a look at the comments. So first one here. So I, I've got a couple comments here, which are suggestions on the design. And I love it when people give me suggestions like this because it makes me because this means that people care enough to help me improve the design, you know? And it's great seeing people contributing to this thing because this is what I'm trying to turn this into, you know? Uh, it's, a, it's going to be a community thing. And this little shrine with the plants is my way of giving back to my Patreon supporters most of all, but also everyone else who's looking forward to each episode of Let's Plant. So I really love that you're contributing with your ideas. So the comments are, Number one from Connie Bill saying rocks should be in the middle and two stumps on each side. I agree with that. There's a there's a sense of harmony in there. So what Connie is saying here is that I have four tree stumps and I've got five pots and I did mention that there's a mismatch so I had to create a pedestal out of rocks. And what Connie is saying is that maybe I could move them around so that there would be two, two stumps on each side and in the middle would be just the rocks. I agree with that sentiment because I am a bit bothered by you know, having a mismatch in the design. And then 
Iza Zidlauska went one better and said, Looking good, Chuck. If I may make a suggestion, would you consider getting rid of the fourth stump? It is very different from the other three and doesn't repeat anywhere. I would do the three stumps only and then the rock pedestals. Just a thought. Now, I really like this idea. Uh, what Iza is saying is that we could have the three, three stumps in the center and on either side would be rock pedestals. And that's a very harmonious look. By having the three stumps at the center, there would be a cascading effect. So the tallest one would be at the center and it flows downwards. I like it so much. In fact, I might, I will do this. I, yeah, I will definitely do this. I'll definitely do this in a future episode. Next comments are about the rocks. So one is from Aneta S saying, I love how the new rocks looks. Well done. Keep it up, I can't wait for more. Next one is from Linda Lea saying, adding the rocks was a good idea. After washing off the rocks, it looked like a terrific idea. Sharing your thinking and taking time to develop your plan is a pretty good example for new gardeners. Lots of worthwhile things in life take time. And related is comment from Tomas Mones Cazon saying, love the ending montage. Dude, the area looks so much nicer. Congrats, bro. And my first thought for all those three comments was that I'm so glad you noticed that, the last part where I washed off the rocks. And as I mentioned in the comments, in my replies to their comments, doing it all the way at the end, you know, washing off the rocks, is my way of rewarding those who watch the video all the way to the end. Because while they were coated in the, in the mud thingy, the dirt, the dust, they didn't look spectacular, but once the, the dust went off, their real colors went out and they're just stunning. Yeah, always watch till the end, guys. The next batch of comments follow another theme as well. And I'm really flattered by this one. So first one from Claudia Morel Ruiz saying, You were born to do this. Plants, videos, I really enjoy watching. Next by Oscar Rojas saying that video was so good and I like the new spot a lot. Another from Alex Curtis saying love the editing dude. Lots of work went into this. You're going to have to find more tree stumps for all the Patreon supporters you'll, you'll get this year. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad you noticed the editing because I've been working so hard on finding my own style and I've settled on doing those continuous transitions. In the past, I would just usually do jump cuts from one scene to the next. Then I figured that maybe I could do a, how do you call this? Uh, a more connected transition from one area to the next. Because that way it gives you a better sense of the field of view of the, the entire area. Because if I just cut from one area to the other area, then you wouldn't know how one part of the garden how one part of the garden fits into the other side, you know? It gives you a spatial awareness of the entire area. So you know that if I turn right, this is what you're going to see. If I turn to the other side, this is what you're going to see. And if I head outside through the garage, you would know what to see. And if I turn around and go in, then you know what to see. I think this helps everyone get a better feel of how things are arranged and I really like how it turned out and I'm glad that this is resonating with you because yes, as Alex mentioned, there's lots of work going to this, lots of thought mainly. So I'm glad that it paid off. From Lisette Wonder Woman saying, I love, ele I love using elements from nature to decorate my garden and landscaping, mainly because that's all I have and can't afford things for now. LOL. I look forward to seeing your end results. I agree. I love, the, I love the natural look. There are many other people who love doing a, a whimsical garden, you know, uh, with containing lots of, um, not necessarily toys, but uh, either quirky or weird or cute or little stuff. What's that term there? 
anyway, whimsical objects, I guess. Uh, it's not really my style. It's not that I don't like them, it's just not my style, you know? I definitely like working with pots and with rocks, and I've been trying to use that theme with most of my designs. I do appreciate I do appreciate the look with you know a wasteland type of look or a industrial type of look where they mix the garden with some rusty objects or maybe a wheelbarrow or various stuff, you know. That look is perfect for a much wider area, but in my case I'm just doing this along the fence, so there's not much space for me to expand outwards, so I have to do it sideways. And in order to do it sideways, I need to have the design more compact, and using rocks and pots is just perfect for me. And like Lisette says, it's what I can afford, because most of these materials I can find laying around already. I've got, I've got them already. I've got them already, and I could look around and see people getting rid of them either for free or really cheap so so a little bit of economics factors into the answer as well from in him penta 7 that was quite a workout i was exhausted just watching it nice mechanics too for your back mm -hmm. can't wait to see those seedlings in spring i am not going to let that go i mentioned on instagram under a different way yeah <laughs> yes make sure uh I need to make a mental note or actually write a note, place it in a monitor, stick it in a monitor somewhere. That way I won't forget. Yeah, um, as I said in previous videos, I'm going to keep chopping off flower stalks just to contain the spread of mealybugs, but I'm going to allow a few plants, uh, maybe keep them somewhere where I'm sure that there would be no infestation, and I'll let these plants I'll allow these plants to bloom, that way I could uh, try from seed again and I'll be doing that next spring. That's still quite a few months from now. The spring starts in September, so it's only May. That's a lot of months. So. I'll think about it next time. From Not Another Cooking Show, Haha, <laughs> the Patreon Shrine. Love it. You should make one yourself. <laughs> oh, check out uh, Steve's channel, Not Another Cooking Show. It's a great channel. So here's a shout out for you, man. <laughs> Another comment here from the Dub Rose One. Love the early colors in the rocks. I think it's time you start making your own cement pots. Mm. Easy to make and inexpensive. I was so glad you didn't run over the border at Chaviria with the wheelbarrow. Yeah. About the last part with the wheelbarrow and the imbricata on the side, I had to make sure to do a dry run before I started hitting the record button. So what I did was to just run the wheelbarrow and see if it fits. And once I figured and once I figured out that it worked, then mm, <laughs> Yeah. So a little maybe well, if I had an assistant here, I could do a behind the scenes, but unfortunately, I do everything myself, so no chance of that for now. And regarding the first part about making my own cement pots, such a good idea. Oh, I should teach myself how to do that. I know how to do it in theory, because I know how to work with concrete, cement, but Pots are delicate, I think. There might be a proper way to do it. Maybe I should go read up about it. From Patricia Morgan, loving this so far. Good work. Thank you, Patricia. You might have noticed these plants in this little box here. I'm going to talk about them in the next episode. These are my recent purchases, but it's too dark to show them off right now, so maybe next time. And that about wraps this first episode of recap if you got any suggestions on what you would want me to address you could either just place them in the comments on my videos or on, on this video and I look into answering them if I know what to say thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next recap